Hi guys and welcome to video 17 in the But How Do It Know companion video series. Now in the last video we've built a clock which is running here in front of me. Now this is the exact circuit that we built uh, before with the exception of this uh, yellow LED that I added in order to help us visualize uh, the double frequency clock that is sourcing uh, the whole thing. Now today we're going to introduce a new part that's called the stepper. So conceptually the stepper looks like this. So it has one input which is uh, the clock signal that's coming out of our clock and it has six outputs which are six distinct signals that will represent six possible steps that each instruction in our computer will be uh, allowed to use to execute some part of its operation. So the idea behind this stepper is to take uh, the clock signal, which we can see here on top of the diagram, which is an infinite sequence of um, zeros and ones, and break it up into chunks of six steps that uh, we can use to um, do things as part of our instructions. So each step lasts exactly one clock circle, and during each step, we will have uh, like we saw before, our clock E signal uh, turned on for the first three quarters of its duration. And then in the middle of that, our clock S signal, that's going to uh, be turned on and allow us to capture whatever we're enabling somewhere else. And these steps, these six steps are going to repeat as our computer executes uh, different instructions. So the stepper looks like this if we look at its diagram. So it's quite a complicated piece of circuitry, but in the end, it's only using parts that we've seen so far. So we can see in the middle, there is uh, 12 uh, one-bit memories that are uh, chained together. There is also uh, some inverters in there and a few OR gates and a few uh, AND gates as well. So I'm going to go and try to build the stepper as uh, it's shown here on the diagram and we'll see if we can get it to work. I have assembled uh, the stepper here. Uh, first, let me just indicate what gates I'm using because it might not be obvious uh, from the video. So here we have a NAND chip, SN74HC00. Uh, Here's an OR chip, SN74HC32. We have two registers, SN74HC373 two AND chips, SN74HC08, and an inverter, SN74HC04. So uh, be sure you have the diagram from page 102 in the book uh, before you as uh, we go around the circuit here, it's gonna be very helpful. So let's start with this red uh, wire here, which is really the reset circuit that you see in the diagram. So it's going uh, into this inverter here, which generate this yellow signal here, which is the input to the first uh, one bit memory that is housed in this register right here. The reset signal also comes down here into two OR gates. And both of uh, the outputs of these OR gates serve as set signals for our registers. Secondly, we have the clock signal, which is uh, coming in through this white wire up here and uh, comes here, gets inverted, and its uh, signal and its inverted signal are sent to each of these OR gates here to be ORed with the reset signal. So if we move on to these two uh, registers, uh, if you look carefully at the one bit uh, memories in the diagram you will see that all the odd ones share a common set signal and all the even ones share another common set signal so for this reason it's possible to use uh, registers to uh, house these one bit memories instead of building them explicitly like we did before from NAND gates so all the uh, odd 
one bit memories are in here and all the even ones are in here and you can see these wires are connecting them together uh, going from these to those are the yellow wires and going from these back to um, the odd ones are the orange wires so once they are all connected together each output of an even uh, one bit memory gets sent to uh, this inverter right here and this will produce uh, all the signals that are then uh, if you look at the top of the diagram they are all uh, anded together and sent to the different step signals except for the first one which goes to an OR gate here uh, that gives us our first uh, step so let's hook it up to our clock and see what happens. Okay, so we have our clock here uh, that I connected to uh, our stepper. You can see that the clock signal here uh, feeds this white uh, clock input for the stepper. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so it seems to be working properly, although I find that it sort of jumps straight to the fourth or fifth step here, sort of by itself. There's something else uh, strange that's going on. Uh, normally, if you look at the diagram for our, uh, that contains clock, clock D, clock E, and clock S uh, signals, when clock turns on should be the same time that clock E turns on. But now you can see that clock E turns on a quarter of a cycle before uh, clock. So there's something funny going on here. Let's, let's try stopping it and turning it on again to see. So this time I think it started properly at step one. But we still have this out of phase thing going on between clock and clock E. So what's actually going on here is that this this clock circuit and stepper circuits have uh, what is called a state so they retain values either in these uh, uh, registers here or in these one bit uh, memories here and uh, when we talked about uh, one bit memory and registers uh, towards the beginning of the series we mentioned that the initial value contained inside uh, these one bit memories or these registers were sort of random so when we start up the clock and we power it using the Arduino so what's the value initially inside uh, these guys and inside these guys we don't really know so it's sort of starting up perhaps in a messed up or inconsistent state also we have our uh, uh, initial clock signal here that's really an infinite uh, loop of zeros and ones right so when it starts up does it start with a zero or does it start with a one all these things are not exactly clear and that's what's making the clock uh, behave a bit funny and uh, consequently the stepper as well. Let's try it another time. So now we can see that these guys are synchronized the way they're supposed to. I think this stepper started properly at step one, but I'm not 100% sure. So I've done a bit of reading, and it turns out that what this circuit needs is something called a power on reset. So a power on reset is a signal that is turned on for a short amount of time when you power up uh, a system or a circuit like this. And every component, either the clock or the stepper or other components uh, that have uh, state sensitive uh, information inside them are hooked up to this power on reset signal and they know how to initialize themselves based on its value so what we want to do is to have a power on reset for our little clock here and that in the first seconds of turning on the power here it will know how to initialize itself properly. That could just be letting it run a few cycles to make sure that everything gets ironed out when it starts, 
I'm not too sure. So I've never uh, done uh, a hardware uh, power on reset before. So uh, I'm going to try and do this and see if I can come up with something that doesn't take too much space and uh, that can make our clock and stepper uh, work properly. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've created a quick power on reset circuit here and I've hooked it up to our clock and uh, stepper. So the first thing you can notice is that it's very messy. There's a lot of wires going up and down everywhere. So a power on reset circuit is very invasive. It has to uh, sometimes go deep into uh, your different parts and circuits to make sure that when it is on, uh, the initial uh, state uh, is preserved. It's not complete, so you'll see that there's still some uh, manual work involved in, in getting this working properly. But I think uh, what I've done here gives you an idea of what is expected by this kind of circuit. So let's turn it on. So as you can see, even though the power turned on now, our clock is still ticking, our initial clock is still ticking, but the rest is sort of frozen in time. So you can see that uh, stepper is stuck in step one, clock is on, clock E is on, clock S is off, and nothing is moving. So I added this push button here that's going to act as basically the end of our power on reset. So now uh, the system is still in power on reset mode and when we press this button and keep it down uh, the, the system is going to start in its normal uh, operating mode so let's try it out okay so as you can see uh, things started moving we can see that the stepper started uh, advancing properly we can also see that uh, clock and E are uh, well synchronized as opposed to what we saw uh, before. So now if I let go of the button, it's going to fall back to its uh, reset uh, state. So as you can see, this is not complete. Normally you would want uh, another device uh, waiting automatically for a certain amount of time before turning off the power on reset circuit. Uh, I wasn't able to do this. Uh, one of the problems that I have is that our source clock here uh, sometimes it starts on 1, sometimes it starts on 0. I couldn't really figure out how to get that uh, to work. Uh, if anybody here is an electrical engineer or really good at this stuff, you can post below and uh, tell me how this can be done. But anyways, as we dig deeper and deeper in this, we're veering uh, further away from uh, the contents of the book. So uh, we'll keep it at that for now. The important thing here is to remember that when you have a large-ish circuit like this or you have some time sensitive uh, components and, and components that need to remember state uh, it's important to consider a power on reset in your design or else uh, it might behave uh, really strangely so in the next video we're going to put this aside and implement our emulated clock on our project board see you soon <laughs>